Okay. Yeah. Very good evening, friends. We have all gathered here today for the second session of the structural engineering series organized by ACCI Working Group. This is the second of the 11 lecture series that has been planned. If you can just hold on a minute, I'll, uh, I'll just mute everyone. I don't want the sound to come. Okay, thank you. Now, topic for today's deliberations is how to begin and complete a good and efficient structural design of a project. This lecture is all about the process of managing an office or handling a design office or delivering a design product. It is not about the design itself. It's about the design process involving a lot of people in closing the design. The design cannot be done by only one office, but by a system where there are architects, structural consultants, MEP consultants, landscape consultants, clients, geotechnical investigating agency, all to integrate and close the design quickly and efficiently. It's all about the efficiency and the closure of a design process by utilizing the managerial skills of the organization and not about the design. The key discussions of today will broadly revolve around the following six categories. Number one, design development by mobilizing other decision makers. Two, design stage for various parameters. Three, delivery stage. Number four, ability to issue 100% structural good for construction package. Number five, BOQ and estimates, and six, periodical checking. Friends, it is now my privilege to introduce the speaker of the day, Engineer G.H. Baswaraj. Engineer G.H. Baswaraj, Managing Director, Chetana Engineering Services Private Limited, is a well-known practicing structural and technology professional in India. He got his bachelor's in civil engineering from GBDT College of Engineering, Daunagere, and post-graduation in structural engineering from IIT Pawai, Mumbai. Engineer Basuraj has successfully designed and completed more than 1,000 multifarious projects that include residential apartments, mass housing, commercial buildings, malls, hotels and resorts, hospitals, industrial buildings, software technological parks, biotech parks, process industries, and refinery plants. Some of the prominent projects handled by Engineer Basuraj include Purva Venezia and Prestige Southridge apartment complexes, World Trade Center at Brigade Gateway, Golden Palms Resorts, Prestige Obelisk Software Park, AstraZeneca and Biocon Biotechnology Parks and Ruchi Soya Industries under oil refinery plants. He has rendered his professional services in the international arena as well. Al Wazir Sulaiman Center at Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Amberj Islands Office and Commercial Complex, and Zoye Residential Towers at Bahrain are a few of his international ventures. Engineer Basuraj has been a trendsetter in introducing some of the daring innovative applications in reinforced concrete technologies. He has developed innovative technology of structural system called external core beamless ceiling dry construction technology. This technology has been evaluated for acceptancy 
and has been certified for constructively constructability in tall buildings by Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru. Engineer Basuraj has also developed an innovative wall technology called C Techos, the wall technology, a post compressed drywall technology with AAC wall panels. This technology has been evaluated for acceptability and has been certified for constructability in tall buildings by IIT Madras. The curiosity and overbuilding interest within engineer Basuraj has enthused him to immerse himself in R&D works in the field of construction chemicals. The biggest expectations of his research is in the possibility of achieving the most promising material without the need for big changes in the current technology and manufacturing process. Engineer GH Basuraj won the ICI Birla Plus Endowment Award for Outstanding Concrete Structure of Karnataka on two occasions, once in 2006 and then in 2011. Engineer GH Basuraj is the recipient of ACCEI Bengaluru Center Eminent Engineer Award in 2009. Engineer GH Basuraj has been conferred with ICI Ultra Endowment Award for Outstanding Concrete Engineer of Karnataka in 2012. His organization as project management consultants were instrumental in Karnataka Slum Development Board getting Prime Minister's National Award for implementing best cost effective building technology in construction of houses for city slum housing projects. Engineer GH Basuraj is currently a member of the core committee for the development of 3D concrete printing technology in India with its headquarters at IIT Madras. Engineer GH Basuraj has maintained highest level of professional integrity, ethics, and honesty, and contribute his efforts to high level engineering. Friends, I am happy to introduce him, and I now request engineer GH Basuraj to deliver his talk on how to begin and complete a good structural design of a project. Engineer Basuraj, the floor is all yours. You can unmute yourself. Uh, one minute, let me. Basuraj. Uh, now he's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Please go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rangnath, for your uh, nice introduction and uh, nice uh, words about uh, GH Basuraj. <laughs> so it's a great journey so and a huge amount of uh, say professional experience has made our lives more meaningful and uh, useful to the society so we are proud of that and uh, as we are always the part of the association of uh, consulting civil engineers and we are very happy and proud that we are participant in this uh, lecture series. So I am more over honored for making this uh, presentation. So of the second uh, lecture of the series. Is is everything all right, uh, Ragna? Yeah, it is uh, It's fine. Uh -huh. I have uh, passed on the presentation to you. Uh -huh. You can uh, click on and uh, start the presentation. Okay. On the screen. Click mark. Yeah. Ah, they got full screen mark. Presentation don't know. Okay. Yeah, correct. That uh, blank space you can move it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah, good. So, as uh, the title says, say it is about how to begin and complete a good, and uh, Ragnath added an extremely efficient uh, structural design of a project. I had only good structural design. Rangnath added efficient. 
So I have to continue that word. So efficient structural design of a project. So this is about, not about any specific design. I'm not going to say anything about uh, any specific analysis, specific uh, structural systems, specific uh, detailing or specific uh, codes. All that I have, I have left to others, left for others to say, put their effort towards the communication of those knowledges. Here, my effort is, say, with our huge experience of designing large projects, how we are able to make, say, a beginning of a good design, what preparations we need, how to complete a good structural design of a project and deliver to the satisfaction of a client and more prominently, say, to the benefit of the end users. That means the last appreciation is always the end user. So it is, it is towards the total humanity. So how a structural engineer is useful to the society in delivering a good design. So in my perspective, see, I have to refer here uh, Ashraf Habibullah, uh, Habibullah for uh, of, uh, our ETAB and uh, SAFE software of CSI. He always refers the structural engineers are the, the ones who bring the peace to the society by means of ascertaining the safety of the structural design, safety of the buildings, and on, on top of it, say the safety of the human beings who occupy it. That means our responsibility lies, I mean, lies around establishing a good structural design, not from the perspective of a business model or a service model or a, an application or to a project or otherwise. It is about the human safety. Our effort and uh, knowledge delivery requirement is, is around the safety of the human beings who occupy the buildings. So under all circumstances, whether it is wind load, whether it is uh, occupied load, whether it is a dead load, whether it is the earthquake load, under all those circumstances, how we are able to put all the safety norms, make it a very trustworthy and a dependable building for the human beings. So always our thinkings and efforts in evolving the designs or the method of analysis and assessments go around these fundamentals to see that the occupants are safe enough. And uh, in a business model, there are expectations that it has to be constructible, it has to be economical, so it has to be say thoroughly say evaluatable by other acceptance uh, say teams. That means your designs and methodologies have to be, say, at par with the other practices being made, either by code or by a knowledgeable uh, resource. That means we are approaching the project by a comprehensive methodology towards all these. So first from the occupant's perspective, second from the knowledge perspective of the uh, structural consultant, third from the uh, the economic perspectives of the, the, the one who so makes the building. So indi indirectly, you are trying to integrate the users, the builder through this knowledge. So this is the greatness of this structural engineering profession. So, so many say structural engineers who have been practicing in this country or in this, in this world are all the contributors towards the say peace, or the say indirectly the comfort of all the humanity in the in the in the universe. So they are all contributors towards this cause. So I have greatest respect and passion towards this uh, profession. So in view of the great contribution this profession has to give to the humanity. So in view of that, I just take it ahead on. Say this topic is about how a design office has to deliver a good uh, structural design of a project. So I'm just making to begin, say, how a design work starts in a design office. Say, when a design, say, beginning is happening, so we have to understand what uh, everybody practices this. We are, there are three four, three, four stages in the delivery of a 
good design first is in the design development stage and uh, design stage and the delivery stage so i have just put in the first design development stage no dtd philosophy i have specifically mentioned this because lot of discussions during the design development stage go on a dtd philosophy so dtd means discussion till death so lot of people get involved they sit spend time conduct repeated meetings without any conclusions and even uh, there are a lot of ego issues lot of uh, knowledge uh, questioning issues around this design development stage so you have to follow one philosophy of no dtd philosophy that means whatever you decide you decide for the best of the project best of the acceptance best of the economy best of the safety and uh, say more passionately towards the architectural say concept what an architect conceives and what a client accept that as a concept around that the engineering delivery has to happen so in view of that say the rest of the teams control management of dtd lies majority of the times with the structural consultant or the architect so in this team of clients architects and uh, then the other uh, engineering consultants other participant even the construction team so amongst all of them the most knowledgeable engineering uh, person is a structural consultant so he is the most biggest necessity uh, oriented personality in terms of systems in terms of safety in terms of economy in terms of material science in terms of the behavior in terms of the performance whether it is wall whether it is structure whether it is painting whether it is soil whether it is a crack secondary crack primary crack for all the say small problems to this thing the fixing responsibility comes around a structural consultant so in view of that he is targeted being questioned being expected to deliver the answers so there will be lot of dtd discussions around a structural consultant so i have put that words specifically as a no dtd philosophy by structural consultants he has to manage everybody under this guidelines that he makes a decision communicates to the rest of the team healthily acceptably and then cost effectively so around this he has to mobilize the decision makers who are involved in the say system so I'll, around this aspect what mobilization a structural consultant has to do so the first comes the data mobilizations data mobilization for a good project begins from the soil so geotechnical consultants and the survey information about the topography then the levels then the strata whether it is a hilly area whether it is a valley whether it is a plain ground what is the the nature of the buildings what is the impact on to the, the safety of this whether it is sliding all that aspects the absorption of the say as a ground realities comes from this absorption of this data from the geotechnical consultants and from the surveying data so around this so i'll just extend a little more around uh, geotechnical consultants say so we have a variety and category of geotechnical consultants available all over the world say each project the based on the necessity and the involvement or the exposure of the client to, to make this geotechnical survey they engage as geotechnical consultants but structural consultant has to be extraordinarily knowledgeable about how to get the work done from a geotechnical consultants he may be having a methodology he will collect a sample he will see that the top soil is loose he will go on analyzing the data at the laboratory and say that the spc is only 15 ton per square meter you go another 2 meter deep you, you may find hard strata you may go you go another 4 meter deep you may get uh, disintegrated rock so without a lot without a proper exposure to the ascertainment of the conditions of the ground realities so these problems we keep facing from the data provided by a geotechnical consultant a structural consultant must have a thorough knowledge of assessing the report given by a geotechnical consultant so in by view of that he will make the first safety 
to the say building design by right by assessing by evaluating the proper geotechnical uh, say informations you will be making these the decisions about so that means you must have a reality about what is the state of say below this in in as a guideline so if he is able to make the assessment of n valleys at a depth up to at least two times the breadth of the foundation so that means to be this is a norm that means from uh, bottom of the foundations up to the to be depth whatever soil strata is there that is under a compression zone it is where a failure bulb evolves around so that means if that evaluation is not just from the top of the soil at the foundation level it is the gradation of the soil which gives the say bearing ability to the mother from the mother earth towards the building there will be a soil structure interaction and uh, the structure above also can contribute to the safety of the building if there is a rigid structure if there are rc walls then the foundation settlements will be very very say bigger so these are the beginnings of the assessment and taking a guideline giving a guideline to the rest of the team in an organization the mentor or the principal consultant or the head of the design organization design team is responsible to give these assessments to the rest of the team based on that rest of the safety of the soil will evolve around this data so this is an important stage of assessing uh, the safety of the building whether it is for the settlements or the differential settlements or the uh, type of the foundation suddenly you think that somebody has, uh, gives a uh, say report that means this building it is a 25 story building you have to go for a pile foundation so that is where you have to a structural consultant has to make an assessment whether these are the realities whether report is good enough to make this decision or you need a evaluation or you need another special consultant to give an opinion so this is a lead to be taken by a structural consultant at this stage say based on going say going further on to the anything so the information collection at that becomes the base for the rest of the operations of the design of the foundation system then the next important uh, say mobilization happens around architects so there are lot of versions of uh, interactions between structural consultants and architects i i'll, I'll always express my views on to what is the professional practice between the architects and the structural consultant what is the best approach so i respect my profession i am a mathematician i am an analyzer i am a designer i am a material scientist i make the assessment of the safety of the building i i understand the earthquake i i understand the behavior and performance of every element which stands the load that is my responsibility i am not a creator of a geometry i am not creator of a concept of an occupancy i am not the creator of uh, the assessment of the statutory norms so there is a separate team which evolves all these concepts so he is notably called as architect so that means i should always be a respectful say participant along with architects the best buildings come out with a good and accepted relations between an architect and a structural consultants these two integrations by means of nature of personalities then the expectations then the respect for mutual uh, professional uh, capabilities and uh, the performance of uh, each category of architects as well as structural consultant with a previous background these are the great contributions to any project so there is a huge amount of uh, interactive relation between an architect and a structural consultant so we should as structural consultant mutually respect each other and work along as the co contributors towards the end end product that is the building so i am today i am just touching more on to the building design not on to the rest of the engineering structural design so i am just touching more to, towards the structural design of a building project not the other projects say when you start beginning say that means a good structural consultant should when after we don't indulge into the concept don't indulge into the architectural expectations give them the maximum freedom of the design give them whatever is asked by the architect you should show that yes you are capable you will be able to absorb an engineering safety 
in spite of uh, extraordinary really, uh, huge concept, you will be able to generate the economy for that. See, the economy, the structural engineering design, always I say that either you give me the depth or give me the money. I will able to, I'll be able to give the structure. That means give me the depth means the depth of the floor for a structural system or give me the money. I will reduce the depth. I'll spend the money. I'll give you the solution. These are the outlooks of a good structural engineer. So in view of that, give that freedom to the architect. He's not going to indulge on to you. He's not going to insist that you will you have to do only this or that. Those who understand work with a longer period of association, they understand very well. They participate with you. They respect your knowledge. They accomplish your capabilities and then take the take and work as one team. It is where a good structural engineer and a good architect always become an integral part of a. Generally, because of this philosophies, a, a client always matches an architect's office with an accommodatable structural consultant's office. Yes, this consultant can, can work very well on this architect with, with this architect. This consultant can very, work very well on this size of the project. These type of philosophies always happen around the decision making around an architect and the structural consultant. So when you start dealing with a specific project with an architect, say you drive them, you give them the information. So you give them the clarity about the first vertical element. That means whether columns or that means based on the architectural concepts. Suppose you are designing a building and trying to locate the vertical elements in the most acceptable manner to not to the architect, to the end user. You should, you should understand that this is acceptable by, say, end user. It is acceptable by architect. It is acceptable by cost economics, by this, say, and it is constructible. With this view, you should be able to interact about the structural systems. So when you start interacting about the structural systems, first elements are the vertical elements, which are interfering into the, say, planning. So you start working around the vertical elements for the typical floors, so for the transfer floors and to the parking. So the best parking a lot, parking uh, uh, say planning comes from the structural consultants. It is the integration of the basic necessities of the uh, parking, see where is the three module parking, four module parking, two module parking, driveways, comfort of the driveways, putting the columns inside a driveway, outside now. So these are the understanding of the functionality of a planning by a structural consultants and start giving a solution towards that. Then that becomes a great say contribution to the say, system. So these vertical elements in any floor becomes the first hindrance to the planning or to the say aesthetics. So be careful on say ascertaining the vertical elements. If you are able to ascertain a proper vertical elements along with the sizes, then you have done 50% of the job. That means that means in all the flow plans, if you are able to identify proper vertical elements, you have solved their architectural planning. You are able to mobilize them to go ahead with the working plans. You are able to mobilize them for a grid dimensioning and grid numbering. That means that planning starts flowing out to the other people. Working plan starts flowing out to the other people. That is where, so your uh, elements and grids, and uh, that is where you start working around a geo drawing for, say, acceptance. That means you reach the typical, so that means the flow plates. So in a flow plate, so they, say the depth of the flow plate system, that means the depth of a beam, depth of a transfer girder, depth of a truss system, depth of a, say, long beam, all these matter, the functional aspects and the floor to floor heights. So you should be able to understand the cost economics, the acceptability with beam or without beam, even the beamless. So all these are the systems you have to propose onto the project, then work along with an architectural concept. So that is from vertical elements, you are going to start flowing into the horizontal directions. So these are the, when you are flowing around the horizontal directions, you watch every floor, what you are able to contribute into the system. So with this, then if you start contributing, then you go to the specific say requirements where you have a cutout, you have a this thing, uh, architectural uh, say, uh, say atriums, all this becomes every floor, we, there will be a, a review and then acceptance of this. So you start enjoying 
by contributions of horizontal elements into the aesthetic beauty of the ceilings. So if you start enjoying, then you become part of the architectural engineer. You start become an architect. You start become an engineer with an architectural sense. You are you are at your profession by name. You may not be an architect. You may not be called. But in your heart, in your contributions, in your senses, you are always an architect. Whatever elements you create, you may call them as structural elements for your purpose. Ultimately, in the building and in the acceptance and by the end users, they are all aesthetic elements and safety elements. So where you contribute towards safety as well as uh, uh, aesthetics, say so you become an architectural engineer. So those structural engineers who become a good architectural engineers are the best contributors. Every attempt by all structural engineers should be, should be made towards understanding the architecture, contribution towards the architecture, contribution towards the cost economics, contribution towards the constructability, contribution towards the material science. These all come along in evolving the structural systems so from, from the lowest level to the right up to the top of the building with the terrace, helipad, overhead water tank or a tower, anything, all come from all these senses. So it is the understanding of the stuck linear from all these senses who becomes a contributor to the system. So architectural integration is the prime say drive around a good building design. So I should more insistive around this philosophy for structural engineers that they should accept this or adapt this or they would def definitely be by learning this by experiences and start working around this. Now come to the next mobilizer. So Eric, I mean, I'll, I would like to express um, another thing. So when you have to work around an architect, you should become a driving force, not the architects. That means observe architect, start accepting what is this, drives, then say, can we do this? Can we do this? You incorporate this, you come out with this, you finish the grid work, you finish me, give me this input, you start working, I will complete, I will, I will start working, you complete. So it is an exchange of information without waiting for each other. When he understands, when he clears the vertical elements, you can go ahead with the formations of all J rank, even including the general first principle model for your analytical ability. So that means your work begins with speed by means of accepting the, the vertical elements and driving a methodology to conclude the vertical elements. Afterwards, you go on discussing about the flow plates. This cutout is required, that beam is required, this beam is not required, you remove the beams, all that is okay. But first conclude the vertical elements so that your mobilization of the systems and the analytical approaches and the casting and the Rest of the things happen around in your organization. So it becomes, you should become a driving force towards this goal. Then MEP, I should say, say that there are, say, there you find a variety of MEP consultants and uh, in this. So, so there is a lot of uh, lack of, uh, say, observed like structural consultant. They also should understand the uh, importance of aesthetic requirements, functional requirements of architectural this thing uh, understanding where the pipe has to be diverted where how the terminations should happen so with this then they start then they say you should always again don't use a dtd philosophy discussion till death till death with say the mep consultants if they are knowledgeable simply absorb if they are not, you should also have a sufficient amount of geometrical knowledge of how the system should work, whether a sinking is required by this much, whether you should modify, whether you should take the pipes inside or you should be able to take the pipes outside, whether you need uh, only 25 mm sinking or you need 100 mm sinking or you need 200 mm sinking or in any floor, you need to drive, divert any of the pipes in that floor. These solution a structural consultant should find and interact with MEP uh, team, then guide them. And what you should insist upon them, simply close the geometrical dimensioning of the STPs, UGSM, shafts, sunken areas, overhead tanks and ducts. These are the general phase. Let them do engineering at their home, at their office, in their thinking. Don't bring all those thinkings onto the table. Conclude the geometrical aspects. Make them work around these lines, produce the results and give the architect as well 
a structural consultant, a data closure. When this happens, the so much of interactive say time spending say, is cut off. Then you are on a more decisive approach for producing the things in the office in various directions. So these all these independent elements of STP and UG some even the retaining walls, including the service criteria. Then the, especially the shafts. I don't know how many times we spend time on only understanding the shafts, why they have to be so much, why this has to be like this, what is the fire norms, how the, when the closure is required, when the opening is required. The structural consultant, if he is understanding the geometrical aspects as well as the functional aspects of the say, geometry in uh, uh, MVP, then he is a good consultant. He is able to interact, get the things closed well, and also say contributes towards something. Suppose as MEP consultant comes back and says, no, I need uh, say 100 mm sinking for your toilets. I say, then if you do 100 mm sinking, you do waterproofing and you put your construction team effort for filling all those 100 mm's. Then people struggle to put that 100 mm sunken uh, filling by useless concrete or by a screed. Nobody will cure. Nobody will uh, be able to complete the job on time because it's all say 0.3 cubic meters of concrete or one cubic meters of concrete or five cubic meters of concrete in one floor. So to make that, so the construction team has to put a huge effort. So you have to drive the waterproofing systems, then so MEP geometrical information, so drive them and guide them or work along with them, have an interactive and acceptable approach towards the geometrical closures in the MEP services. This is what I can say with my experience on to so all these aspects. Next, client. I have reached the client after all this. That means you are not worried about, first you should not be worried about a client's acceptance or otherwise. You should be able to say, push along, understanding the nature of the project, whether you should do, propose the steel building or a flat slab building or a concrete building or with a Maiwan system or beamless building. You should know the client and the nature of the project, what you have to present to the client. So that is where an interaction starts happening. It may start early than the architect or later at this stage. Only by order, I have just put that as the uh, say last one after uh, these interactions. So when you are working with a client, you should know what structural system you have to propose. Then based on the understanding on the, the, the number of flows and the nature of the behavior and the structural systems and the earthquake performance, you should know what is the foundation system you have to propose, whether it is raft, whether it is a pile foundation, either isolated, whether it is combined, whether it is strip. So you should know how to treat the basements and the grade slabs and the foundation systems integrated approach along with the MEP. That means you cannot treat the foundation system independently of an MEP services. Whatever you carry, all the drainage systems and the transfer of the say services has to be integrated into the foundation system. So you should know the say so, so skills about manipulating or maneuvering the foundation system for accommodating the services. Whether you should embed a pipe for the say diversion of a uh, drainage water, whether you should have a drainage embedded as a part of the foundation slab or a grade slab. These are integrations required in the foundation systems when you are proposing to the client. Then the acceptance, then the timeline and the costing. These are uh, other criteria. Say when you have to deal with the client, costing becomes a high priority. You must know what you are telling, what is your how must, what is your thumb rule. You should also be able to speak out this would cost around this much. This is expensive. This is not expensive. This is workable. This is very constructible. This is very fast. This is very slow. You will lose a lot of time when you adopt this system. So these should have a fluency of the market realities and the costings when you are proposing a structural system to a client. So this comes definitely out of experience, but every time, even without an experience, there has to be a lot of homework to be made by a structural consultant. Even when you are working a quantities, you should know what is the cost, what is the cost per square foot or a square meter, or what is the cost in the approximately, whether it is cost 100 crores or 90 crores or only 50 crores. You should be able to assess that in your immediate assessment based on the nature of the building. You are doing a, you are doing a understudy building. You should know what is the system you have to propose. So this is your groundwork. 
you are without the experience you may have to do a lot of ground work backup work even previous preliminary analysis or from a beginning of a non acceptable system it may become an acceptable system subsequently so you have to evaluate your own methodologies your own working systems before you go to the client then this will become a driving phenomena then you will be start you will start talking what you are suggesting is in the good direction or it is or whether you are bullshitting or you are doing something good to the project so these clients are knowledgeable they are exposed they have a huge experience this is what you have to respect there are like us there are 10 more consultants who are providing the services that means they are gaining the knowledge from 10 more systems you are one of them so this is where you have to start respecting their interactions accept that work back if it is good you accept if it is not good you convince there is no question of making any argument no this is the only there is no egos will not work in the business or in the profession no ego will work ego building safety will not listen to your egos building safety will listen to its own performance its own loading its own earthquake behavior so it is not in your control you have to exercise your control and then provide the service and the methodology to be adapted so this is what you have to serve the client that means what you serve the client is your service to the humanity is the service to the occupants whatever you are giving to the client as a service is the service to the humanity soft safety you are passing on earthquake safety you are passing on when uh, the people are comfortable people uh, they don't find any cracks they don't find leakages so what is being uh, provided is comfortable aesthetically sensitive so all this is acceptable to the human beings who are occupying the buildings so this is you this is your service to the client then landscape consultants landscape phenomena i have when simple roof don't spend too much time with the landscaping consultants simply understand where he wants what he wants after that what is the loading coming on to your systems you identify that category of say loading provide the system whether it is slab or whatever it is level differences whatever is required for a, a, a landscape don't ever say that this is not possible it is not it is not going to work landscaping has got a huge priority in the building aesthetics you have to respect that don't say that i will not be able to put a plant or a tree on your uh, the rcc slab you have to provide a solution whatever is the loading category if it is 50 tons also you should be able to provide a solution is a requirement you cannot question that it is your ability to give that solution so simply absorb the architectural or rather the landscaping concept whether there are huge artifacts whether there are huge trees whether there are any huge loadings whether there are any huge level differences what is that you understand give that quick solution and clarity to the landscaping consultant give him freedom of what he wants to do let him do you understand the loading take a commitment that this is a loading we are going to design afterwards after you in, during the process when he comes back with the acceptance of a concept with a client when he comes back to kind to the working drawing that time whatever requirement is there whether there is an rcc dwarf wall or a masonry wall is sufficient where this waterproofing system is required that waterproofing system is required you make your solutions for your engineering design of the structure your loading criteria from a landscape becomes your highest understanding of the landscape not the say intricacies of oh this material is this that material is this i have a stone here i have a water body here i have a soft scape here i have a hard scape here let him do whatever is required i understand what is the loading he is doing putting putting onto the structure this is your capability to absorb that landscape consultants participation give them a pleasure of creation so architects and landscape consultants are the biggest contributors onto the aesthetics give them a big freedom give them a joy that is your value additions to the project as well to your own profession so i i have put the i think the a good amount of interactive approach on to the say decision makers so who are involved in uh, this thing that means you have to mobilize your decisions around these uh, systems so this becomes the highest backup of your work where your work now starts beginning 
in the organizations where you can get your speed of closure of the work. So you make a higher level. At this time, you start putting more people onto the working team. That means now you start getting, getting onto the geometrical closures. What do you mean? What do you mean by geometrical closure? I don't say I'm I'm not worried about what is the percentage of reinforcement, what is the of this thing. I have already understood that before proposing. Geometrical closure means column orientation either is okay, vertical elements are okay, floor systems is okay, flow plates are okay, extension of the flow plates in each floor, whether it is okay, acceptable, whether it is uh, at par with the architectural concept. You have an interactive closure with the architects. Then, uh, then uh, close the geometries of that. So make them understand this and give the information for this to be absorbed into the architectural drawing. That means he starts understanding, he starts putting the data into the architectural drawing. That means all vertical element uh, informations have to be so flown into the architectural flow plates. So your uh, columns and wall location sizes, then the floor, floor plate systems, Flow plate system, I am not worried about whether it is beam or slab or flat slab or beamless, whatever it is, whether it's steel building or whatever building, as per the architectural flow plans, whatever systems you have been proposing and taken a path ahead for that, you start closing the sizes. Closing the sizes, whether it is by your experience or it by your preliminary analysis or by a flow plate, one flow plate analysis, it is your talent. I, I, I keep doing sometimes, you do this size, then you start working. Then that is how the beginning happens. That means, so you out of your experience for this, suppose you, the grid is 11 meter by 11 meter, what is the slab thickness, where it 290, 300, 310, where it is post tension, not post tension, steel building, what is the beam? So these system sizes, you should start closing onto the flow plates. That means where geometrical closure has to be well integrated in your organization. So uh, along with the capturing of the services requirements, that means you have, so you should absorb the cutouts, floor cutouts very well when you are start, when you start closing onto the geometrical closures. That means your STP size, STP under the UG sum size, UG sum shapes, cross section. Sizing, I mean geometrical closure from bottom of the foundation to the top of the overhead tank. You should have a vision to close Everything at one time because today you are not doing an element by element design and supplying the information to the site. You are doing a 3D analysis, you are understanding the behavior, you are assessing the performance of a building in all categories of loading. Because of that, you must have a 100% closure of the geometrical sizes when you start analyzing and start producing. That means don't go back to a MEP concern and what is your overhead tank size when you start to doing the model. Don't assume anything. So that means your next stage will become the data documentation. So, so I'll, I'll just end this approach and go to the next aspect. That is where your DBR happens. That means, so design basis report. Whatever you have been understanding on the building, whether it is this category of load, that category of load, this many number of floors, that many number of floors, we have so many basements, soil data, earthquake data, loading data, geometrical data, all that you document in one single document that is we call as design basis report. Whether the client asks or not asking, it is your responsibility, it is your may, it should be a way of working that you should produce a DBR in your organization. It should be thoroughly referred and respected like Bible in the organization, your organization itself. Whatever data changes happens, you ch change that in your first DBR. Then you change that in the model. That means this is your basic document of understanding a building, the category of the building, the class of the building, the number of floors of the building, the structural system you have adapted, one systems you have adapted, SPC you have evaluated, the retaining wall systems, then the terrace loading, then the toilet sunken, whatever geometrical informations and the database you have uh, analyzed or understood, you have to compile this as a design basis report because this document becomes the mother for all your analytical model inputs. Every input to the analytical model or a design model goes from the DBR. So close the DBR with the greatest respect and all authentic informations expected or rather satisfiable to the self, not to the others. So close the DBR with that due respect 
and uh, pass on to your own team for closing the going ahead with the analytical and design models. So next, uh, I'll just uh, I'll uh, again all elements uh, sizing closure. So I mean this is after. Uh, based on say this sizing closure, I I I start uh, linking that to the next uh, aspect. That means just go to the next one. Say uh, sizing closure. I have repeatedly told what what do you mean by sizing closure? That means indirectly you are you should be able to close hundred percent general element drawings for all the floors and all the systems, foundation system, retaining wall systems, grade slabs. Vertical elements, flow plates of the basements, first flow plates of the podium, then uh, typical floors or transfer floors, or terrace, or a tank, or a tower, whatever is there, whatever uh, things are coming on the building, everywhere you must close the 100% element sizing and GA drawings with accuracy by your own assortment of preliminary models, final models, or trial models, or trial analysis by experience or by thumb rules or you are by your assessment you can go on upgrading but close first that is where addition happens to your team nobody will close you there has to be a leadership to close this uh, uh, sizing you have to guide them you have to tell them that you bring this close this slab thickness is a criteria for economy you're not you're not touched any reinforcement any design any steel sizes any structural steel dimensioning yet this is about the system and the system sizes. This will be the total final accuracy for required for the analytical model and the design, which will happen for the drying closure also. If your drawings are 100% J drawings or J drawings are 100% accurate, your speed will be 100% or 150% or 200% faster than anybody in this world. Your accuracy lies in closing the so your efficiency lies in closing the accuracy of the GA drawings. So that is where your input to the next speed. Next, say I have say out of our experience so far, I have been talking about the data collections, the interactions, then the information is to be done. I'll now start coming how you handle a design drawing in an organization. I have started calling this as S0 drawings. S0. S0 means Assuming that whatever you are doing or whatever you are getting done by a draftsman, first you think that it is the right thing or 100% accurate. Finish that way. Give input to that way. Finish all drawings. Enter the reinforcement. Enter the size. Enter the nomenclature. So close the, all the drawings, including the list of the drawings. That means you focus on, say, foundation system drawings up to these things and then the flow plate drawings, then the flow plate reinforcement, then uh, then the horizontal elements reinforcement or the horizontal steel beams detailing. Everything you start closing yourself. Don't submit for anybody. You ascertain yourself, you close. Then you will be closing, parallelly you will be closing the 100% accurate design input. That means modeling, data, compilation of the results, all that is happening parallel by a design team. This is by a drafting team. Give the maximum input to the drafting team. Respect them well. Dotsman in the organizations are the most useful, say, participants in a good and accurate drawing. So feed them a good amount of information. Close vertical elements, position, sizing, orientation, then all flow drawings, all flow plates, reinforcement patterns. All columns and wall reinforcement patterns in a scheduled format, say with the along with the nomenclature, guide them. Even finish the STP uses them, retaining wall sections, everything as understood by you. Guide them. Whoever is the team leader should or a design head should be able to guide them to finish S0 drawings. These are not ready for issuing to anybody. These are the method of working and closing in an organization. S0, S1, S2, S3. We started calling so long time back. S0 means you are closing all. This is not meant for because zero validity for going outside the office. That is the meaning. It is valid for you for close the closing the work, but not ready for leaving the office till it becomes S1, S2, or S3. So uh, till such time, it is an S0 drawing. Foundation system, you go on upgrading. For combined foundation, you may start modifying them as uh, strip foundations or combined foundations. So you
Yeah. So working around S0 drawing is the biggest strength by a good structural consultant's office for producing a good structural drawing and a safe structural drawings. That means you are without closure of the design, you are checking, you are going through the processes of detailing, material requirements, the corner reinforcements, uh, torsional reinforcement, uh, shear links, then the pattern of reinforcement, the column patterns, so vertical uh, uh, shear wall patterns, so steel detailing, then uh, beam, steel beam detailing, column junction detailing, truss detailing, all that you are closing as if the design is done. You have already done a design, design, preliminary design, either by experience or by a model. It is left to you how you do. But S0 drawing means you have understood the design. This is the tentative, plausible 90% closure of a design work. So you start producing 100% accurate structural drawings as calling them as S0, not ready for leaving the office. This is the fundamental philosophy which we have practiced around this and we are very, very say successful and uh, uh, that is what I am proud to share this uh, say methodology of how a structural drawing, structural drawing closure happens in an organization through S0 to S1, S2, S3. S0 becomes a benchmark data when it when a client asks for an information. If you have produced S0, you can give any commitment of delivery to any client, any contractor. Nobody should ask you any drawing. You should be able to deliver whenever they want. If they want tomorrow, you should be able to deliver. If they want for form work, if they want for planning, you should have an information of including the water tank or a terrace layout or a parapet detail. So this is the approach you should follow in a structural consultant's office so that information, because you are continuously, professionally, fully occupied to deliver this information to the project. So you have a full responsibility, full understanding. You are the only person capable of doing all this to the say project or to the best of the humanity. So you should be able to say focus around this S0, produce the things around S0, deliver them whenever they're required. So generally we don't deliver S0 to anybody. You start removing the reinforcement layers or the more detailing information. Any geometrical information that stage can be passed on to mailed or by commitment can be given to anybody for any types of understanding or for procurement. This is the base. After this, it does not take much time for delivery of any drawing. If you have completed S0, that means you are only, you have completed nomenclature of all elements, you have completed individual detailing of all elements, vertical as well horizontal, floor or beams or slabs or columns or trusses or whatever it is, you have completed a specific drawing. You are only verifying the safety accuracy of the drawings when you have to issue the GFC from the design model. That means you are, I have not touched the analytical model yet. I have not touched the earthquake analysis yet. I have not touched the seriousness of a software to be used or not. I have touched the drawing productions in an organization with experience and with the understanding by your homework. So this is the, what is the way ahead for producing the so information required for a delivery. So I will st now start touching on to the, say now this is all about the design. I, so far I have called this as design development stage. I have not touched any delivery yet. This is all developed, kept ready within your organization. Nothing has left for any good for construction. Now we come to the design delivery stage. So now convert S0 package into S1 package, into S2 package, into S3 package. What I mean by S1, S2, S3 is S0 is your basic uh, closure as per your understanding, including staircases, terrace, Details, overhead tank, retaining walls, STP, everything you have done. We have put effort to close all the drawings. Your drawing list is closed. Numbers are known, drawing numbers are known, transmitter is ready. So now you start converting them into an executional drawing. That means complete the foundation, enter the reinforcement, verify the, this thing, then uh, verify the... So this needs, when you want to convert this, this is where your analytical model and uh, say design closure has to be say brought into the picture. Right now I'll explain S4, S0, S1, S2, S3, what is required. To complete this, I'll go back to how you have to say do the article and design closures. S0 indirectly means 
that means you have completed it's a parallel activity and uh, s2 s1 s2 s3 are they are all parallel activities base work in s0 is 80% physical work completed 20% safety and accuracy balance that means you it is not valid for issuing out of the office this is the meaning so you start now going back to a design actual design so go to the next slide now so to support the delivery now this is not that you are doing this model or analysis or design closure now you would have begun at the interactive level itself when you start making a model when you start generating a system when you know what systems will be accepted what is the thing you start generating a 3d model a total design approach this is one i have brought this aspect only now but so much of work is done in the organization from the first day so this is not that you are doing the 3d model now i am just linking the 3d model so far whatever drafting on input is given by the engineers from their understanding of the model or the design you have completed s0 now you start closing that means you close the vertical elements you close the foundation sizes you close the foundation design whether using safe or whatever methodology individual foundations whatever it is so analysis then analyzing and this thing one a clue about the analytical i don't know whether i have a specific uh, you show me 7b what is the 7b results and compilation i'll, I'll just touch this uh, 7a in because i have not focused much about the software or the methodology of the software but still i will put a clue of say this your integrity say integration of the safety and economy is around this modeling and the say sizing and the closure of the design whether it is a soft story whether earthquake uh, torsion is accounted where the earthquake parameters are absorbed well whether the say system is capable of absorbing the earthquake well whether your deformations are in control all that is part of this say stage of the work i have not touched much on this because my focus is on how you want to close a design office output so this is is not something secondary this is the highest priority i have not chosen this for my talk but this is of a highest priority where you have to put your effort into say repeated effort of verification compilation of the results then uh, checking up the uh, compilation then uh, nomenclatures to be matched on the model then the results to be aligned then uh, for verification of the entry or the verification of the reinforcement or the structural steel designs you have to compile the results as per the requirements of the stages of the drawings so this is an important interactive say, stage i have not touched much on this because this is a specialized field so other people would be touching around this onto the analytical aspects and the design aspects and design closures so parallel this is a parallel engineering work in the organization where from the first day itself you start this thing then finalization with respect to that means if your j drawings are 100% clear your modeling is more accurate you are checking the behavior of the building for applied full loads is your primary responsibility then optimizing the models for safety stability and economy is your fundamental control then uh, correcting the load uh, say loadings and assessments of this along with the systems uh, with uh, i have to search this i just touch this in the system if you are able to drive a system or a material science where your loadings are less you will be delivering a better economical structure that means what you are loading you are putting dead weights through dead walls you choose a wall which is lighter why you should spend a higher heavy wall so you should be able to understand the wall technologies more better when you are driving so there is no point in putting say we you should be able to say bring down around 1800 to 2000 tons per 1 lakh square foot of building you should have a thorough introspective approach towards the reduction of the loads this should be the attempt you should be able to bring down that much quantity of around 1800 tons in 1 lakh square foot of a building this is my guideline out of experience if you are able to achieve that then you are a better and a good structural engineer good designer it is not by software or anything it is by decision making assessment guidance interactions with the architect what walls he has put what you have to tell them to put 100 mm 150 mm 200 mm more based on the slenderness if the floor to floor height is larger then you should also be able to control the wall thicknesses and the stability of the partition walls also this is also a responsibility it is not that structural design what is coming out into the model 
or your analysis or a software if the only safety requirements are a delivery responsibility. So what is being done and produced by others also, you should have a concern and an outlook towards those outputs. So this, around this, I already said what fillings you can reduce, what walls you can reduce. These are, because these will go into the basic DBR, design basis report. When you are making DBRs, you should start acceptance. Yes, 100 mm wall, so with a lower density, with 600 kg per cubic meter density is okay for constructability. Then what is the wall finish? What is the, whether it is punning, whether it is a, is a putty, or whether it is plastering, what thickness, evaluation of the load, all this becomes the, your assessment. If somebody is telling you, say, huge loads, then simply don't accept. You are putting all that onto the system. Structure will become expensive. The horizontal so loads will also increase because of the dead weight. So take control onto the loading by making the material science assessment in the total project. Next. So I think <laughs> I have touched the majority part of the analytical approach and the drawing part. So this is the results compilation, which is an important stage because so many people simply take the dumping of the output from a software and they think they have done the great job. This is the blunder. Many people do this blunder. What is coming out of an output of a software is not, is not good enough for usage at all unless you verify either by thumb rule or by load per square meter or load per running meter or a low, total load in the building, what is expected, whether the total load is in the order, whether load per square meter of flow, that flow plate, whether it is okay on the podium, what load you have put, whether it is coming on that. So these are the assessments in the results before you start converting the results into say the say convertible drawings. So this stage comes with the experience and the poor thinking into the say safety without accepting. I simply refuse a output from any of the best softwares or the system or by any of the best truck engineers unless we ascertain this results by all your intuitions or by thumb rule or by previous data or by sensitivity of the quantities. So you should be able to, sometime back I have to share this, say somebody had produced a BOQ based on the structural design, the drawings were completed. The steel coming was so huge, say so many kg per cubic meter, we have a guideline, whether 100, 110, 120, 150. If the quantity is larger in your BOQs, that means you should doubt the design itself. There is something wrong in your design. So go back, check, check the drawing, check the system, check the analysis, check the input, where it is wrong. So that is where you start controlling the reverse engineering. So these are aspects where you also re-establish the safety. It is not that software has given, this is the output, I am good enough, I am a PhD holder, I am a 25 years experience, nothing will be, no failures will listen to any qualifications. It will listen to its own performance and the amount. It is all quantifiable. All failures are quantifiable in structural engineering. You should be able to make those assessments of the quantifications. Then only you should pass on the results to the design set deliveries. So results compilation becomes an important stage. Then the, your speed will come around search. Compile your results for columns, walls, vertical elements, then foundation system, then uh, shear, shear walls, then the flow plates. These are various aspects of the compilation of the results. Irrespective of whether it is a concrete building or a steel building, methodology is same. I'm just generalizing my talks are more around concrete building because we have done more of concrete buildings. Our talks are always around uh, flow plates of a concrete building. Then uh, the lastly, the I already hinted on converting S1, S3 for, to our good for construction. Then uh, so checkers play a great role in uh, converting the results and transfer that onto the already produced structural drawings in, in the form of S0. So verify by checkers, then verify the accuracy of the reinforcement so from that perspective. Then lastly, I think the delivery, be proud always. Take some proudness that you have delivered 100% drawings in a drawing without expectations of money, without expectations of anything to a client or to a project. Rest of it, you deal it as a, as a business model. But approach the project 
with 100% delivery of the information from your side. This is your, it is your heartfelt feeling that you are contributing. Nobody will disrespect you. Don't be hesitant. Say, oh, I'll give this placement, that I'll give only foundation this. Work yourself, do yourself. It will save you a lot of time. It will safeguard you against the uh, failures. It will safeguard you against the economics. You have enough time, enough data to verify or to control. You have two years time when you have produced the drawing when it is 100%. So you, before producing anything, so you have a corrective modes possible when you have been able to produce 100%. So that you can tackle 10 other projects next time. Don't spend your time on to one project by, by say staggering the works. This is a fundamental philosophy I follow. It is left to others whether you have to follow that. So there are each one will have a business model. I simply follow 100% delivery model for a project. You may not be able to, you may not deliver everything as a GFC. Complete in your organization, complete the quantification 100%, complete your accuracy with along with the transmitter ready for delivery. You may take out a print or you may not take out a print. Convert them put them into a storage system, safe, establish that, keep sleeping or work on the other projects. This is a fundamental approach in producing good drawings. I have to insist that produce 100% drawings, deliver 100% drawing, deliver 100% safety. This is the 300% meaning in Chetana is around this. So I follow those guidelines. So ability to issue 100% structural drawings as GFC package is the Fundamental priority, I call that as transmittal first. That means when you begin a project, prepare a transmittal of 100% drawings, then work back on the reverse engineering. That means your transmittal should be visible to your team. He has to produce this many drawings, he has to produce this many, somebody has to produce the results, somebody has to do the model. So that means you are doing a transmittal as you are beginning. That means what you are delivering, you are putting them on paper. So whether you have you have 500 drawings, don't worry. Produce list of 500 drawings. You go on upgrading the list, but you will start producing. When you start producing, you will know whether, whether 10 drawings are sufficient, whether you have to make that into that stage of work into 15 drawings, or it may become only seven drawings. Upgrade, doesn't matter. But produce the transmitter, produce the 100% produce the drawings, then deliver and sleep, sleep well. I think other aspects are routine, it is about BOQ estimates which are required based on all these things. If, if you are able to produce a good structural drawing, any QS fellow will produce. There are a lot of data bank required for producing a BOQ and estimates in, an, uh, in a structural office. Each office produce, have their own. What is the element of steel consumption in each element? How much is in column? How much is in wall? How much is in foundation system? How much is in slab? Much, all this data, data bank is uh, available or may made by each individual organization, they will have their own data assessment towards the BOQs, then the deliveries. Then the last aspect is the periodical inspection, which is very, very important. Don't sleep without inspecting. Whatever you have produced, inspect that it is done like that in the site. Then that is the end of the safety. So this is the overall outlook. I think I have taken my time well. I think I have consumed more than what I was supposed to do. I, it's already reaching six, six o'clock. I'm very happy that I'm able to say, put my thoughts across to the huge say team of struggling who may be watching this program. I'm proud that I'm able to express this data and my experience to so many fellow struggling who are contributors to the nation's wealth, nation's health and people's health and safeties. Thank you very much, Rangnath. And uh, thank you, Ajit, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Basaraj. That was a very refreshing talk. We seldom uh, hear people uh, speak about the modus operandi in a structural engineer's office, and uh, especially the freshers uh, who are just entering the consultancy field. Uh, the their thoughts as to how things work in an office. Your, your uh, lecture today was so refreshing. Uh, I sincerely thank on all our behalf uh, for your presentation. Uh, friends, uh, now I think uh, 
we can go into the uh, question answer uh, mode. I will first uh, allow uh, you to unmute yourself one by one. You can uh, uh, lift, uh, put up your hand and uh, ask any question to Engineer Pasura. Any time, please don't ask, uh, uh, unmute, or all need not unmute. Only the person who is asking a question, let him unmute. Manav Samat, have a question. You said some, you said, uh, you made a remark about being able to understand the intent of the architect. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I have to understand the intent of the architect that he has to deliver via a structural design. Yes, yes. And many times you find that you are uh, you are working with a young architect who, whose knowledge in his field is less than your knowledge in your field. Mm -hmm. So does it create sometimes a embarrassing situation? It definitely creates. You must have a lot of patience. Uh, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this? Uh, this is Megal Kareka from Bangalore. Yeah. Yes, Hello. Megal. 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 Good evening. Uh, good evening, <laughs> Basraj. How are you? All good. Uh, very, a very interesting talk, and uh, you put all our experiences together in a very short while of uh, one hour. Yes. Uh, all 30 years of experience within one hour you shared. That's very good. I would like to know uh, your experience, or if you have any experience in using. AutoCAD AEC combined with Revit and BIM for your, for your design process. No, if we have not. Using, if you are using no, no. the AEC, uh, AEC no, packages. No, no, we have not done. Okay, but are you contemplating doing that? Have you tried it? No, maybe I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> what I know, I will still continue to do. It is not uh, that. Uh, it is not. Uh, uh, that, uh, no, it is not an aversion. No, it is not an aversion. Oh. I know to do this, I'll continue to do that. That's all. There are okay. have plenty of uh, food on the table to say, take it ahead. No, but your views on that. Your views you on no, absolutely. If your organization, say in an organization, there are experienced teams. We cannot change the team. There are 20 years experienced people who are comfortable working around this methodology. Just continue that. There is nothing wrong. It is not going to produce anything extra safety or extra value addition. It is how you present your input and to the best of the understanding of this, uh, this thing. Each one will have their own method to cut down the time to best present in a best format. So I am happy with what I am doing. So I still continue to do that. Okay. Thank you. Sir, thank is, you. Can, thank can, you, I, can thank you hear you, me? Sir? Yeah. No, yeah. Rule. no rule. Yeah. Yeah, sir. This is, I am Please from Gulbarga, sir. Please I'm yeah. a, I'm a new structural engineer. Yeah. So, but uh, I'm passionate about my field. So I take, uh, I am all, always very serious about the structural behavior of my buildings and all. So, sir, uh, after listening you, it was uh, really don't be, life changing. Don't be, don't, be, don't, don't be serious. Don't be, be passionate. serious. Be passionate. Yeah, yeah, sir. It was like, uh, it was many learning for me. But uh, as a beginner. Hello. Like, I think uh, what are the books uh, that will be helpful for me? Because uh, I cannot approach to like, people like you who are at the higher stage so that you can teach me or guide me every time. So is, is there anything where I can stick and be on the right path? Uh, being a good structural engineer, how can, how can I come out uh, and produce all that what you have taught me today? Yeah. 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 Another 25 yeah. years Another ahead. 25 years ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Today is the learning. Today is the learning. Yeah, one minute. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Basraj, you can answer him now. Uh, tell me. Tell me again. No ruler. No ruler. Sir, I have asked like like a, for, the, for a, being a good structural engineer, what are the basic books I need to stick on to learn in a better way? Because every day say, is learning, sir. Say, say, I, say don't, I don't follow it. You know, nobody, you know, nobody, nobody follow it. Nobody follow it. I think uh, Shaman, can you unmute? 
ஒன்ஸ்டர்மேஷன் <laughs> ஒரு <laughs> you know keep their aesthetics and uh, you know elevation things and all what is your opinion about this you start enjoying architecture you will produce very good structural engineering no. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean a uh, number of times seriously a number of times we were uh, forced to compromise on the no, no, nothing 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 it is it is your there is always a, there is always an effort to convince each other there is structural engineering is not about compromising no Never. compromising on the structural design just to no. keep their uh, elevation or aesthetics say if you say from one system to other system if you have switched over it is not a compromise but if you as long as you don't compromise on the safety then it is not a compromise cost acceptance is by the client you give them if he is giving if architect is giving more depth in a flow plate you produce better results for economy if he is restricting the depth you will be spending more money simple okay thank you vijay uh, next question uh, good evening i am sivaraman uh, this question is to mr basaraj during the initial stages of the project uh, design phase Uh, we normally uh, compare the different structural systems and foundation systems and send a recommendation to the owner or the project management consultancy uh, which is the right way whether it is based on the cost only or uh, we need to do the swot analysis for all the all the design approaches or the structural choices we have say when you propose a structural system you you are the best judge to assess the performance cost effectiveness aesthetic acceptance and the constructability these fundamentals nobody will violate performance aesthetic acceptance cost effectiveness and the constructability so don't complicate the constructability in the name of a structural system so as long as they are simple and acceptable by all the agencies your structural systems are excellent don't call them by any method don't call column beam is bad don't call flat slab is the only efficient thing whatever is required for that specific spacing if you are looking for a large spans you have to propose a different system if you are looking at a small small spans you have a different so under these guidances you are the best judge to pass on a system and make the others convince not others sir if the architect is giving you Wrong. the choice to choose the the cost and the constructability yeah, cost and uh, which one should i choose uh, which one should i choose whatever he wants whatever he wants you are selling you are you selling what he wants what he wants okay thank you okay thank you hello hello sir yeah kapil singh sir kapil singh sir yeah mr kapil singh please go ahead sir i am a first year am a student in structure me yeah tell me should i start from should i start from make a career in structural design make a career in structural design i think you are echoing my request to everyone is request to everyone is stop your video stop your video i think the echo is mainly because echo is mainly because of the video hello hello yeah tell me again Sir, I am a ME student, first year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What should I do to make the career in structural design? Be, be a curious, curious structural engineer. You'll learn everything. Yes. 
every day every moment in life i am not able to from where should i start from no from this What moment you is your curiosity you are a curious man you are asking so be curious yes. at every moment you will you will start <laughs> learning yes okay thank you Hello. thank you kapil good yeah, evening sir uh, good evening sir my name is swati i'm first year mtech student I have doubt regarding rnc concrete yeah sir actually in rnc concrete we are using admixtures to uh, increase think, the testing time i will i will not take this topic at this moment okay sir uh, yeah you. please do you have any other question swati uh, no sir i will okay. take thank you thank you swati Thanks. next sir good evening sir good evening who is this who is this sir this is bharat sir from badari yeah tell me yeah, bharat go ahead sir can i ask me can i ask the question in my mother tongue sir kannada yeah please go ahead sure, no sir. problem i'll explain in english yes sir uh, sir mm. your software so stad mate eat up sen use martevala sir adanna na eshtu percentage agi na in depend agbek sir adanna le nimu gottilla beka henge nimu artha illa andre use madbedi ha sir if you have not understood uh, softwares don't ever use sir. you will be fooled sir. Mm-hmm. you will be fooled software will fool you so yes, don't sir, become yes, a fool yes sir yes sir thank you sir okay thank you bharat next anyone else yeah can i come back please back please who is this madhav ka madhav ka yeah madhav please come one of the issues uh, we have come across see i have about 40 years of experience in this work field one of the issues is uh, the designers don't have site experience they have gone after after college straight into a design office without able to understand the processes that happen on site so it affects the design to some extent and definitely it affects the detailing so what should be the idea, ideal career graph for somebody who wants to be a designer a designer should know how and how meticulously how systematically what process is under what is the methodology used for construction without that he cannot be a good designer everything whatever a constructor has to do he has to be understood by a designer without that he cannot design he will be only misleading and one of the issues uh, we come across see, mm. our generation did not have uh, this computer software etc on our table not not so necessary started with hand calculation no we no not with nec- hand calculation no not necessary rules. at all not necessary for a good I designer sir for a good designer software is not a must i know i know but see that ah. is not appreciated by the no, no, today's yeah. youngsters no no if, as long as you are able to understand so unless, the fund, unless, fundamentals well if you have been able to assess the systems along with your fundamentals uh, then uh, you are only on an assessment for producing for ease of producing results and comfort and uh, carrying out the, in a time frame you this is a different approach but you, this cannot be a basic uh, the, the requirement uh, software is not a must for doing a good structural design entirely agreed entirely agreed mm good hello hello yeah yeah this is yeah this is a uh, washika uh, speaking uh, can i yeah, ask a question right okay uh, sir thank you very much for your uh, very good uh, in depth uh, knowledge of giving all the how we should design that that's one thing and uh, what uh, question i am having is like nowadays as you know that uh, once the a uh, building is designed and it is executed and it is constructed uh, some other builder or some other client will uh, purchase that one and he will go for additional floor or whatever uh, thing is then the, the new structural engineer has a responsibility to design that collecting all the basic inputs what earlier it has been done by the other consultant but uh, the thing is now the data uh, will not be fully given by the other consultant in that case is the new structural engineer has to completely reanalyze remodel and check all the things but then his responsibility wise or future if anything happens 
whether the re responsibility of the original reception will also will come into play or it's entirely on a new person because this type of confusion will be there because this uh, client is uh, not all bothered he is not like uh, very much well versed with uh, what is to be done he is, as a layman he has come to us so we have to give them the complete feedback and uh, our expert guidance so see this this is not a te technical requirement yeah this is your ability to take the further responsibility and participate in the system whether you want to participate or don't want to participate is your call the client has to take the further call whether to give or not to give is your understanding with the client to take okay. the responsibility or not to take the responsibility is your call with the client so it is not okay. a technical demand yeah, yeah. My, my question is whether uh, the reanalysis remodeling everything has no, to be whoever is taking that call Okay. As to ensure the safety, okay. it does not come just because the client is asking too many two floors extra. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, whoever is responsible to take the call, he has to ensure that it is possible or not possible. Okay, it is totally on his responsibility. Yeah, whoever wants to take that call, so whether you want to participate or not participate, it is your call. Whether you want to give the data or not give the data is your understanding with the client. Okay. Thank you, Vashankar. Yeah. Uh, next. Hello. Uh, hello, yeah. sir. I am Mr. Huddar from, uh, senior engineer from ISRO. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Huddar. And nowadays, uh, what is happening is uh, fresh graduates and post graduates in civil engineering, they come out of the institution. They may be having very good academic record. But yes, what I observed is these people are totally dependent on software. So I think it's a very bad trend. You see, one should have a physical feeling of structure. My sense is one should directly after post graduation, at least minimum one year, he should work in a construction site to understand the structural uh, behavior and detailing of the structure. What is your opinion, sir? Sir, it is it is a career question you are asking. So it is, it is, it cannot be generalized. It is his individual's vision, how he wants to take this. If he is understanding that he has to undergo this exercise, he has to undergo. I, we cannot decide on his behalf what he has to hmm. do. He has to understand that he is going on a wrong path. If he has to follow a right path, he has to undergo the exercises. He has to learn. He has to be chasing the knowledge. Without that, he cannot become a structural engineer. So it cannot be generalized. Okay. Can I come okay, in, uh, Ragnath sir? Can I ask a question? Yeah, Please, Giri. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Namaskara, sir. Uh, sir, we have heard of this uh, artificial intelligence taking over big time with respect to uh, professions such as IBM Watson, at least at a preliminary uh, legal counsel level. So, do you see that uh, nowadays with uh, AI getting more and more profound, at least for buildings which are about G plus 3, G plus 5, I'm told there are softwares being developed wherein, you know, it is just that pick and drag and put in the architecture plan, the columns, the beams, and then the AI or that entire thing will tell you what is the size of the cross section, what is the reinforcement that needs to go, including up to the last mile. Of course, so the inference is that if there are structural engineers probably five years from now, there'll be super experts who will be there remaining only because of their ingenuity and not because of the regular run of the mill uh, designing. So what's your view? Do you feel that artificial intelligence is going to replace this startup or mid segment structural designers, leaving only super structural engineers to the analysis in a very different manner and really add value rather than this run of the mill, you know, where people come and just add value and go away. I mean, don't add value, but do the designs and go away. Say, Irrespective of artificial intelligence or otherwise, every software is a software. Every software is useless unless it is understood by understood by a designer or by a user. Every software is useless. It is not useful to that person. Whoever has understood the software, usage of the software, results of the software, applicability of the software, convertibility of the information to the execution. After all, you're not giving passing on a software to a site. After all, you are passing on a, a decisive information for execution onto the site. The methodology can be anything. Physics is sufficient to give that methodology. 
you don't need to look uh, or link the artificial intelligence as a criteria for the structural design it is one of the modes the mathematics is one of the modes finite element is one of the modes the biggest avenue of structural engineering growth is only the finite elements used by all the engineering community in the world so it is it, you don't have to discriminate or a, a separate out an exclusivity of a software just because it is ai i have we have nothing to do with the rightness or wrongness of the design. As long as the methodology followed, it follows the physics, usage of the software is understood by the designer, it is okay. Otherwise, it is not okay. It is the person who understands the software. It is the designer who becomes the key. Basically, I, uh, in conclusion, because majority of the structural designers today are entrepreneurs, who are doing only relatively small buildings. Very few structural engineers are designing this mega three lakh, four lakh square feet structures. 80% yep. of the structural designers do up to G plus G plus seven. So yep. my concern is, will an app going to replace this particular segment of that consultants? See, every segment has got a greatest contribution to the say, nation. A small or big is a relative world. Say every structure, even if he is doing one gate design, as long as it does not collapse, he is a good designer. He is designing a simple uh, residence, he, as long as it is safe and uh, acceptable, he is a good designer. Every moment, there is a joy of concluding a design. It does not matter whether it is a big design or a small building, ground plus three or an understory building, it does no, nothing to do. Everybody has got a defined responsibility for that ascertainment of business, so our profession. So it does not discriminate, software also will not discriminate this criteria. He, what tools he is using is left to the level of the knowledge of the person who is designing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Giri. Uh, next, anybody else? Hello, sir. Good, good evening. Who is this? Yeah, good evening. Audible? Yeah, you are audible. Who is this? Sir, I am Shubham Ubar from Nagpur. Yeah, Shubham. Please go ahead. Very good evening, sir. I am very thankful. I am very proud, uh, happy that I got opportunity to talk with you. Thank you to the association. So my question yeah. is uh, that uh, whatever like we learn in the masters of technology and structural engineering, that uh, designing analysis, that metric analysis method or uh, finite finite element method. So are these methods generally used in the real life uh, firms in con uh, structural consultants? Because this I, is a time-taking method, like uh, like we are studying in the engineering uh, education. This is a time-taking method. Whatever you do in post-graduation, 100% useful. You are only extending beyond that. Okay. These are the so basics. Is, physics, physics will not go. Matrix analysis will not go. Finite element will not go. These are the fundamental evolutions. The greatest evolution of this century is your finite element method. Yeah, like like this question, I want to ask that these are this is the very useful method that we have to learn it throughout yeah. our life. But th that is not sufficient. Sir, and my next question is that uh, as a structural engineer, different expertises to work like in bridge engineer, tall uh, tall building designs, or uh, trusses or steel structure. So how will that differentiate this different engineer? That I have seen the many consultant has expert in specific. Expertise that is a breach or in tall building or in the industrial shed. How will yeah. it differentiate? See, each one sweats for learning. I have put my efforts in buildings. In buildings. I am not, I will not be able to design a bridge. Ah, yeah, that's, right. that's all. The matter ends there with an answer. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, good evening. Sir, good evening, sir. This is Murugan from Chennai. Yeah, yes, yes, Murugan. Murugan. Yeah, I'm here. One sir, minute. I am Murugan. You talk first. You talk first. You can, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Murugan, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Mr. Morgan, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 
sir this is uh, thank you very much for the greatest uh, session it's a lot of things uh, uh, was there for the learning uh, i am working in a agm projects in mnc in chennai so i have the question uh, while we go for the structural uh, design so where we are having this uh, earthquake uh, analysis whether uh, we we have any uh, process or uh, Uh, assessment, some kind of a methodology. In which phase we have to conduct this uh, ethnic uh, analysis and process? Every building, whether it is single yes. stories, ten stories, or hundred hundred stories, has to undergo an earthquake performance testimony. Right. Yeah. Simply that there is no. Dis- it doesn't ask uh, earthquake will not ask single stories or a masonry wall. You design a building, everything, anything can collapse. It has no rule. It has got only a force. Yes, sir. Every building so, needs. Every building needs. Yes, every, every building needs. Yes, sir. So in this, uh, we have uh, studied this nine path. So which path it is there? Is architect uh, path or a DPR or which stage it is? It is there, sir. What What is that? I come again. It, this component, this earthquake, uh, this analysis. Which 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 path we are uh, uh, going? Uh, like uh, the. Which phase? I am just. I am asking which phase we have to. Find. In the first phase of thinking in every day affair, you have to think of earthquake resistance. Yeah. Everything. Do they every, that at the time of geotech geotech survey? No, no. Every day in every way of even if you are designing a chair, you have to look at earthquake analysis. Okay. Anything horizontal force cannot be eliminated. Correct. 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 Yeah. You assess if it is not affecting, you forget. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gurgan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, anyone else has Hello. any questions? Has any questions? Hello. Yeah, Shishikan, please go ahead. Yeah, Shishikan. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, Basara, sir. Namaskar. Good evening, sir. Good evening. 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 Uh, this is an important minute. question. Shashikant, one minute. Shashikant, one minute. Shashikant, one minute. You are recording. Okay. You are recording. 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 You are Uh, sir, as you said, uh, you are dealing with the uh, buildings uh, majorly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, therefore, so on this uh, subject. Yeah, I am going to go there. Hello. 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 This is uh, uh, this is the important uh, one. Uh, why is it not uh, possible to think uh, uh, structurally uh, considering the basics of a uh, structural uh, design theory? So selection of site is uh, failing. Uh, I say, uh, why are the preventive measures are not taken to uh, prevent uh, such failures in selection of site or land for any structure? Site has nothing to do. Site Any site, do. anything can Any be done. It needs your engineering skill. skill. Uh, correct, That's sir. All. But uh, the That's thing all. is, suppose nothing, nothing. if it is a nothing. hello. You yeah, anything? Hello. Anything can be done on any site. Can be done on any site. Of course, sir. Engineering. But uh, some. Of course, sir. But uh, sometimes what happens? Suppose if it is a small pond, uh, useful for the public. At that time also, the pond is taken for the structure. To build a new building or something like that. You so in construct. that case, you can construct. You can construct anything. Uh, construct anything. Of course, sir. So, but uh, uh, can it not be prevented to avoid it? I am not an administrator. Not it is their administrator role. Administrator if, there role. if there is necessity, yeah, my necessity, job is to give the engineering skill. Give the engineering skill. Oh. You can yes, debate sir. on that. You can debate on that. Yeah. Thank you, Shri Shikant. uh i think we we can have we can take one last question if anybody has a question please okay. ask the question hello sir hello yes, sir uh, this is shri ram yeah shri ram poet uh i am a structural 
prisoner practicing for the last, in the last three years. Uh, I designed with small buildings like residences and up to maximum of four to five story buildings, not beyond that. And uh, most of the times uh, when I design the projects, uh, the plans are in either 20, 30 or sites uh, smaller than 30, 40. Uh, the column sizes are usually given by the architect and they are limited to six inches in width. And uh, the seismic code recommends minimum of eight inches. So there I come to a dilemma whether to design it for eight inches or uh, go by the architect's requirement of six inches. So what should I do? Sir? Architect is only a geometrical demander. I call less geometrical demand is put by architect. How to say solve it by engineering skill is our responsibility. You are you are supposed to generate the inertia. Which method you generate the inertia for that system is our job. So I am not able to give a direct solution. If it is a six inch column, you make it L shape. You make it T shape. It's good good okay. enough to take the resistance. Okay. Don't make don't make rectangular. I have given one of the methodologies. Yes, yes, I understand, sir. Mm, Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. Who's this? Uh, my name is Shiva Kumar. I think hey, Rangnath, yeah. let it be the last question. Okay, yeah. Uh, good evening. Yeah, sure. Uh, see, it was very, very useful to know about your uh, experience you shared in short, uh, small time. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm an engineer working in Dubai for a rebar company. Okay, we deliver a lot of uh, rebar to directly cut and bend and deliver to sites. Okay. I just want to check with you because any drawings we are having a lot of consultants saying uh, sending us international drawings. Okay, for mm -hmm. the buildings, but mm -hmm. uh, none of these places we found that uh, you know this many chairs has to be provided for the raft. Say for example, some rafts are 2.5 meter, 3 meter height rafts are there, mm -hmm. for which there is uh, the chair design itself take like we have to see what is the placing and so that the top doesn't buckle or we have a case where one of the wraps actually the top mat is completely stided also. In your drawings, what you give in India, do you have this uh, practice of giving chairs uh, mentioning also? We want somebody else also to work. <laughs> That's okay, sir. But uh, <laughs> it's okay. see all the, response, all the responsibilities for all the unpaid things, everybody cannot work. Okay. You are true, in the payment, we will work for it. But, uh, that's okay, but in, it is a is it a practice for the no, uh, you know no, no, to have no. this? No, no, no. If you are making a bargaining schedule, yeah, then it is your job. Uh, for chairs are not in the yes, normal. Yes, it's not a drawing. part of the design. We are providing oh, okay. the engineering design. We are not providing okay. the executional shop drawings. Okay, because here after we give what they say is, you know, we make barbering uh, shop drawings. I've answered. I've answered. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I think it, it comes in the constructability aspect of it because the design yeah. doesn't take the chairs into consideration while designing. So yes. it's actually how we practice good construction practices. The number of chairs to be provided is to be decided by the site engineer absolutely from the constructability point of view. So that the top uh, layer doesn't buckle or slide in or whatever it is. It's basically how it stays in its position is the site engineers and then workability. I mean, construction, uh, good practices, construction. Uh, am I right, Basra, sir? Yes, sir. If I am paid, I will do it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Man. Right, sir. Thank you. Thank you, you, sir. Also okay. from now on. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think with that, we will be uh, closing uh, this session. Uh, uh, Mr. Basuraj, that was a very wonderful uh, presentation. In fact, it was uh, more of an eye opener for most of us consultants who have been practicing and we can appreciate each and every point what you mentioned. And uh, I'm sure it will be very helpful to fresh beginners. Uh, they can start their uh, uh, profession by taking note of whatever you mentioned and ensuring that they are on a firm footing in their yes, uh, yes, I sir. thank every one of you for having uh, come and attended this particular uh, session. And uh, we'll be having our next uh, third session next Saturday. I welcome you all to come and participate and make things very useful for all the civil engineering community. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to share my experiences on the huge platform of struct engineers. Thank you. Sir, th Basuraj, sir, thank you very much. We yes, really sir. enjoyed your session. You made me to talk.
<laughs> I thank you. No, 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 no. Hey, you are a warm talker. So, <laughs> only thing is, we should know how you should extract your uh, extremely well ideas not early in the morning, but whenever we wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, uh, yeah. uh, dear Basar sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Our president, Dr. M. U. Ashwat. Thank you, Ranganath and Ajit, for coordinating. Thank you, President. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. With this, we will end today's session. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir.